Hey guys, it's Mish, and today I wanted to share a paper whose results completely contradict the idea that weight gain and weight loss are entirely determined by calories in versus calories out. In this study, young rats were put on either a high fat or a high carb diet for 10 weeks and then checked for how much weight they gained and then another 10 weeks and checked again. The high fat diet consisted of vegetable shortening and the high carb diet consisted of a grain based diet for the rats. And the point of the study was actually to compare how much weight rats of different strains gained, but they found some really interesting results about high carb versus high fat in the process. And so what they found after 10 weeks was that the rats that were fed a high fat diet gained about 300 calories of fat or body tissue for every 1000 calories of fat they were fed. So that means about 30% of what they ate ended up on their bodies when they were on a high fat diet. However, on a high carb diet, for every 1,000 calories they ate, they only put on 150 calories. So that's only about 15% of what they ate. Whereas the calories in versus calories out doctrine would have you believe that they should have put on the same amount of body mass from each diet because it's the same number of calories. But as you can see, the high fat diet actually caused them to gain twice as much as the same number of calories of a high carb diet. So I feel like even though this is in rats, Rats are generally considered to be the best animal analog for human metabolism and like disease type things. So it seems that calories in versus calories out is not necessarily the truth. And the only backing behind it has been people saying you can't violate physics. However, the, the processes in the body are much more complicated when it comes to breaking down macronutrients for energy than just saying the energy goes straight through because we have to put each nutrient through so many steps, so many enzymes are involved, that a lot of energy is lost along the way. Like, for example, it's way easier to store fat because it's already closer to the form it's going to be in your tissues. Whereas turning carbs into fat, which is called de novo lipogenesis, is way more energy intensive, it's really inefficient, and I have a lot of other studies on that I'll be sharing on why it's inefficient and just how inefficient it is. But that is why these rats, most likely, gained twice as much weight in fat instead of carbs. They also found that after 10 more weeks, so by week 20, they actually gained less as a percent of the 1,000 calories, and this result was even stronger in the high-carb diet. So it seems that over time, these rats put on even less weight as a result of the same amount of calories. So this could be because of energy expenditure increase, but it's particularly interesting that the high-carb diet ended up resulting in less weight gain the longer they went. So like, it only resulted in... 200, no, 150 calories per 1,000 calories of mass gain in the first 10 weeks and was even less than that in the second 10 weeks. And this study also explains the fact that high-carb vegans are able to eat way more than they were able to before they were high-carb and actually lose weight instead of gain it because it's much harder to gain weight from carbs than fat. It's just really inefficient to store carbs as body fat and it's really efficient to store fat as body fat. So high-carb vegans are able to eat a ton and only put on some of that as body fat, and they can burn the rest as energy when running and doing sports and stuff, which gives us a lot more energy. High carb's pretty great and scientifically supported, so if you are wondering about why in the world high carb vegans are able to eat more, this is one explanation and supports them. So I hear people say that they think high carb vegans are just making it up and it's all some kind of conspiracy, but that seems highly unlikely because there are a ton of us that are very happy and succeeding. So that's it for the main results of this study, and I'll be sharing quite a few more like it, particularly one in people, since that's more relevant. But this is one of the few studies that actually really got numbers on how much fat was stored out of a certain number of calories and how much carbs were stored out of a certain number of calories of carbs. So it really shows that calories in is not the whole story. And yeah, unfortunately, I'm very sad that it was done on rats. Um, I'm completely against animal testing in all its forms, and I really hope that we as a species will get over using animals for any purpose besides mutual benefit of companionship. <laughs> Got my back here behind me. And luckily this study is slightly less heinous than most because all they were doing was feeding the rats rather than a lot of really terrible studies that I come across studying neuroscience that are really depressing, but I feel like it would be sort of a waste to not use the results and at least learn from them because otherwise the rats would have died completely in vain. Although of course I believe the study shouldn't have been done to begin with on rats, but yeah, that's my little spiel. It's always hard being in the sciences and having to 
rely on studies done in my animal friends who did not volunteer to participate. So I hope that could shine some light on the calories in, calories out controversy. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I'm just getting started on YouTube. And thanks so much for watching.